You know what sound that is, folks. You betcha. That's another noon whistle. I'm Chris Trottier. And I'm John Anzalone, and we're here with the Mike Dolly, extraordinaire, educator, school to work opportunities, youth apprenticeship. I could keep going. Thanks for being with us. And esports, man. Yeah. Thanks. So thanks for having me, guys. Yeah. Michael is the president of the state of Wisconsin esports. We're lucky to have him as an employee of our district. He serves as a CT and YA coordinator, former business teacher. And we are waiting for Jeff Palumbo from Palmer Hamilton, who's their director of esports at the national level, a, lo a great local supportive business. He's running into some technical difficulties. So hopefully Jeff will jump on in a little bit. So Mike, we wanted to talk everything esports, and we're going to make an announcement here in a little bit. Hopefully Jeff will come out, come on and be a part of that. I keep uh, watching. If you see me turn to the right, I'm checking my email to see what, what Jeff is wrestling with. So Mike, kind of give us a little current layout from as the president of the state of Wisconsin esports. What does it look like not only at Elkhorn, but in the state of Wisconsin? So I'll go ahead and I'll give you the big picture and then we'll come down here to the local level. Um, so in the state here, we have about, about 200 participating members, uh, different school districts, whether that be middle school, high school. Um, we have some uh, virtual programs. We have some even YMCAs that participate as well. Um, so we serve about 3000 students uh, across the entire state annually. Uh, we offer three different seasons. We have seven main titles that we offer, uh, and we've uh, started to expand to be able to offer um, some Monday night casual kind of gaming uh, opportunities as well for students to participate in something. Um, on top of that, uh, at the state level, we also offer a variety of internships where we can provide college scholarships for students to uh, participate. So we have uh, students that are doing play-by-play -play broadcasting. Uh, I'm actually meeting with a student today from Carroll University uh, to become our graphic designer. Uh, we have positions for social media marketing as well. Um, so we try to offer students not just through gaming, but using gaming as the medium to connect to um, essentially career, career opportunities and career experiences. So um, locally here, uh, Elkhorn has probably been one of the best programs um, in the state uh, since inception. Um, we've been able to be a state champion in Smash, uh, three-time state champion in Rocket League. Uh, we've been, we qualified for Fortnite this last year in playoffs out of about 275 teams across the state. Um, uh, we did all right in Rocket League in the fall. We made it to, to playoffs and then got booted round one. But, um, you know, we gave it our best shot. So. Some years are better than others, Mike, right? Hey, you know, we're in a rebuilding year right now. So right. Um, like I'm here team. for uh, freshman orientation today, talking to all the, uh, the incoming uh, freshmen to talk about opportunities within esports to try to get them uh participating early on so yeah so your friends you weren't an educator here when patrick oglowski was here but you are friends with patrick who is i forget his official title but he is the head or director of esports gaming for the milwaukee bucks right yep um they're going through um so i guess to get a little into the weeds but the nba 2k league which is what the bucks participate in is going through a different type of rebranding. So they've okay. actually kind of dismantled the professional league and they're moving it into this um, content and influencer type partnership. Um, so they're kind of re-imaging where that league is going. So uh, I know Patrick, we've been talking here and there um, and I know he's he's trying to stay with the Bucks um, and I think the Bucks are trying to keep Patrick there too. So yeah, he, he started the Marquette university program and then from marquette he's now at uh at the milwaukee bucks so great, well, great. i think don't Later. you think john even i mean even if the bucks don't continue their program i can see patrick playing right next to chris middleton or Giannis. i mean <laughs> yeah he'd give it a shot the guy had springs yeah. when he was in school he was quick he had springs you know hey chris i wanted to tell you you know mike and i didn't dress alike today but we did bring something to the game that's alike with the chairs. Okay, hold on. Oh, oh, you got the deluxe model. Yeah, Ooh. he's got the respawn brand there too. So 
I should have yeah. known he'd run up. He'd one up us, Mike. It's I, okay. Listen, actually, I didn't one up you. That was a chair that Mr. Tablock <laughs> ordered and said, "I don't like it." <laughs> all right, all right. Well, you know, I I have no game when it comes to esports, but I have a chair. <laughs> you know, I I think John. You know, when we talk about it, opportunity and access for all kids. I, I think, you know, one of the powers of esports that I've seen as a former principal and now currently in my in my current role is the number of kids who traditionally don't see team sports or individual competition sports um, as a as a path for them, but gravitate towards towards um, this comp level of competition. Um, mm -hmm. Mike, how do you guys, do you, am, am I, is that accurate? And how do you attract kids? Well, so, I mean, the, the stats are there and uh, it's that 93% of our students go home to play video games anyways. So by connecting them to an extracurricular activity, we, we see the, the, the common data that's there that will have increased attendance, will have less disciplinary interaction, um, we'll have, um, you know, typically higher GPA and participation in class too, just through involvement within that. So we do make it a point in order to um, try to be inclusive to, to everybody. Um, we offer casual gaming. So if you're not a competitive gamer, you can still come out, hang out and make, make friends. Um, there was actually a very interesting study that came out from one of the larger school districts in California. Um, they saved millions of dollars because of participation for their nearly 600 students in their esports wow. program, as a majority of them weren't connected to any other extracurricular activities. So and this, Mike, this just isn't at the high school level. Like colleges have esports teams. Kids get scholarships to go to college to play esports, correct? Yeah, we've actually had two students from Elkhorn receive college scholarships to go play. So when your uh, mom says you're not going to make any money playing those games, get out of the basement, she's not telling the truth. <laughs> There's a few extra steps in there, but yeah, yeah, we can, we can play that. That's fine. Um, John, you're you're thinking you were you were playing Atari uh, Galaga. This is a little different. So. No, actually, it was Pong. Oh, there you, yeah. go. there you go. Hey, now since we did like the the since we did the delay where we were you know waiting for our friend Jeff to jump on, Jeff, unmute yourself and introduce yourself. Welcome to Noon Whistle. You know, listen, the technology in North Carolina is a little slower down there sometimes, I think. So, but hey, you made it. That's what's important. How are you, sir? I appreciate it. Yeah, I was hanging out in a, a different room, just just, <laughs> just waiting. I was on, t I was a before schedule and everything. And I'm like, maybe, maybe I'm in the wrong room. So I, I'm yeah. glad, that, glad I'm not here, but I am here. Thank you all. Sorry that I am late. Uh, my name is Jeff Palumbo. I'm the director of esports at Palmer Hamilton. Uh, been in the games industry for about 15 years professionally and here to nerd out with anybody that wants to. Welcome, yeah. Jeff. Glad to have yeah. you. We all have respawn chairs. How about that? I know. We and yeah. and great well and greatly appreciate it as well. So <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, Palmer Hamilton owns respawn, and that's awesome that you guys are all supporting us as much as you yeah, do. We're all about the brand and we're not against taking on sponsors. Yeah. Uh, so I've heard. I've heard yeah. that. Yeah. And we're going to talk a little bit about that later. But for the, for those people who don't know, Palmer Hamilton is the largest uh, K through 12 furniture manufacturer located in Elkhorn, just off of East Geneva Street. Um, the gardeners, Preston and uh, John, are great friends of the program, but also more importantly, supporters of the Elkhorn School District. So, Jeff, we got Mike on here, and Mike was uh, doing a great job of filling in our loyal viewers and listeners to uh, the state of esports locally within our high school and more across the country. Why don't you talk a little bit about Palmer Hamilton, their their acquisition of Respawn, why they did it and why, why you know, they're getting involved in the esports space? Well, I know that uh, years ago, uh, Respawn was a definitely a top tier brand in the gaming market uh, when it comes to desks and chairs. Uh, Preston and I had met about two years ago uh, when it was acquired and while Palmer Hamilton picked it up that reason I actually don't know but I think it's a wonderful acquisition knowing that they are a furniture company as you said you know one of the biggest in K-12 in the United States uh, 
it makes for a really good transition of secondary product for us, knowing that Palmer Hamilton does a lot of custom furniture, especially in the, the esports space that we're launching into. Um, it is a transactional model, so it's, uh, you know, it's easy to get from all sorts of different places, online.com. So it's a nice change and addition to what we do from a custom modeling perspective with all the, the logos and the layouts and sizes. And it, it's pretty much, it's standard, it's slick. Um, all the chairs are vetted by actual gamers because they actually sit in them and want to make sure that they're amazing. The desks are awesome. So it's just, it's uh, the same coin, just different side. And by doing that, we kind of now have something for everybody. I'm raising my hand because you just I have a question. Sure. When you say what makes a great gaming chair? I mean, I'm sitting in a gaming chair. I'm not a gamer, but it's comfortable. I like it. It feels like maybe you're sitting in a race car seat. But what what goes into the engineering of a great gamer chair? Well, a great question. It's a lot of different things, actually. So gamer chairs are actually super upgraded office chairs like for, or executive chairs, I guess is what we would have called them back in our day as we were playing Pong. Um, <laughs> so it, they are meant to um, take the weight of somebody, be there for long periods of time, but still have functionality uh, when it comes to neck support, uh, lumbar support, things of that nature, so that you're not getting sore when sitting for long periods of time. And again, a lot of people that are working on a computer are in the same space. That's why I say it almost is a dual use office chair as much as it is a gaming chair, but gamers have the ability to set a lot of the different things. So in a lot of chairs, you can't set how the, um, the arms go up and down, how they twist inside and out. Uh, yes, th the chair itself can go up and down, but a lot of the other benefits are not there. So it's almost like being able to optimize your game chair and having those small options that, make you a better gamer but a lot of it is also about blood flow um you know we tell everybody regardless of what chair in every if you're gaming for 45 minutes you should stand up i guess just a, it's just a thing stretch out or makes, walk yeah. around stuff like that um sit back down uh, things of that nature especially if you're going to be training for a long period of time which in college we do see you know they train three hours to six hours a day depending on if they're they have a tournament right. coming up or not so, so Jeff, um yeah, yeah. That's so, why. Jeff, tell, talk us, in, you know, tell us a little bit how you got involved in the in, in, industry. Um, I did in the uh, in the uh, when we posted the live stream, shared a little bit about your background, um, your role in North Carolina, and some not for profits, and your volunteerism on boards. Talk a little bit on how you got involved in the in the esports space, and then what are you most excited about for Palmer Hamilton and Respawn moving forward? Yeah. Uh, so I was actually, you know, after when I graduated college in uh, 2000 and from upstate New York, it was, uh, you know, I did the retail thing. I, you know, did the sales thing and radio stuff like that. And I was working uh, at a dealership down in North Carolina when I moved here. Um, found out that I didn't really like any of those. Really wanted to get into the, the games industry because I had always been a gamer, again, since Pong. And the Atari 2600. I was right there. You're starting, to hurt my um, Jeff, you're starting to hurt my feelings now. Let's move on. Yeah. <laughs> so we, uh, I went back and I got my MBA from Syracuse University in innovation management. And then um, I was actually looking for jobs as I was there. And most of the people at Syracuse thought I was nuts. They're like, you do understand that we're like a communications and finance and law school, right? And I'm like, yeah, but, and business. But gaming was really what I wanted to get into. And I wanted to produce video games. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I ended up getting picked up by a company called the escapist. So, uh, it was an online digital magazine, much like any magazine, just online. Um, but more of where it is now, they had the blogs, they had news, they had, uh, content, all sorts of really cool stuff like that. So I became their brand marketing manager. Uh, and as that company got sold, Lenovo picked me up after being at Lenovo a couple of years, they are like, Hey, you're the only person out of our entire company who has ever worked in the gaming industry. You want to launch our gaming division? And I'm like, well, hell yeah. Um, because, <laughs> at, you know, at 32 years old, uh, the, there are no no's. Like, where is their fear? Why would you be worried about launching a brand for a Fortune 100 company and think that it'll go swimmingly? Um, but it did. And so far, they've made about uh, $6 billion on the the product and the, the setup that I 
had helped to bring out. And it was a, there was a small team of us. It wasn't just me, but that's kind of really where I got the, the break into this. And then, um, about five, six years ago, they brought me in and, uh, I launched Lenovo Esports, which was the commercial version. And our whole big piece was not the PCs. We had those. It was about helping schools, universities, K through 12, um, recreation centers, people who needed it just to provide the correct information, how to start a program properly, because, and Mike and I have talked about this. It's all about the kids. If the kids are not succeeding, um, they, your program's not going to succeed. And we see a lot of people jumping in and saying, oh, well, you just stick PCs in a classroom and they know how to play games and they do, but it's not going to be a good program. So, um, uh, they had a significant amount of layoffs at Lenovo. Uh, I had already been uh, formally introduced and in talking to the the um, Preston uh, at Palmer Hamilton and Respawn, and they're like, we would love to do esports. And uh, we already have the design teams. We already have all the furniture. We already have everything. They're like, we just need somebody to kind of put it all together. And it has been wonderful. And I think what makes it so exciting is the fact that there's nobody really like us. Um, there are furniture companies that sort of do a little bit of design. There are design companies that will cherry pick furniture. And then there's some consultants out there that try to set up programs. Um, and I say try because I have to, and Mike and I talked about this too. I have to go into a lot of schools and uncluster <laughs> all the stuff that a consultant has said. And what we really want to be and what I'm most excited about is the fact that I can now be a trusted source of how to build a an actual program from the ground up and include baby steps on how to do it it doesn't have to be people being like you need 60 pcs and an arena and all this lighting and all the crazy stuff that goes on instead it's what can you do what are you trying to accomplish sure you already have a club like it's a lot of questions yep, and then yep. i help them custom design something that not only they can start with any amount of money but then start to know how to build upon well, let's let's piggyback off that custom design because we're using today as the announcement of the relationship between the Elkhorn yes. Area School District, Palmer Hamilton, and Respawn. So let's set the stage. I got slides queued up. We're ready to show the actual photos from Palmer Hamilton. But I guess what I'm going to talk um, before I hand it over to Mike and you to kind of talk about how this relationship was forged and kind of the investment side. I'll just kind of set the set the stage. And and John, you can. You know this better than I do. Like our district is always based on the John's community engagement position and my strategic partnership, and Mike's role as a school court school work coordinator. We're always trying to develop relationships with our employers because we know we can't do this alone. And with that comes benefits for everybody involved. And if there's mutuality, the shared costs are really end up being shared benefits. And I think that's this relationship that has grown in, with Palmer Hamilton and the Gardner family has been just incredible. We've had, yeah. we've had multiple youth apprentices over there. Um, I feel like there's somebody you can reach out any any time and, and you know, they'll open up their business and their time and dedicate it. So um, that's kind of setting the table here. So I'm going to hand it off to um, Mike, you and Jeff to kind of talk through like the investment from both sides, what it looks like, and then we'll show photos to, to our loyal viewers and listeners. So I'll hand it off to you guys to talk about it. Yeah. Mike, do you want to start it up? Sure. So <clears throat> I guess when anybody's looking to kind of dabble into this space, um, I think one of the biggest pieces that most people don't think about uh, when it comes to building one of these, these labs is you need to make sure that your HVAC is ready to go and your electrical. Um, I'll speak from personal experience to where we've had uh, state championship tournaments where we've blown fuses and breakers and uh, it puts us in a, in a big delay. So uh, working and building that, that infrastructure is really, really important. Um, and then at the same time too, making sure that this is a multi-purpose classroom. Um, I think there are a lot of places that when they're exploring this, they think, let's just get a bunch of machines for esports. And I think um, as we have to answer to uh, our, our taxpayers in the community, like it's got to provide more than just esports use. Um, and, and I'll speak kind of from what we're what lens that we're looking at here, too, is number one, we have uh, a handful of PLTW master teachers. So we do get um, some funding in order to help with PLTW. Project um, lead the way for those novices out there. 
Yeah, uh, we are working on getting Act 59 industry recognized credentials. Um, so basically through our computer science and IT classes, students can earn badges and credentials that are recognized by industry. And then that's going to provide uh, future funding as well. So we can continuously keep cycling through some of this material. Um, and then student involvement. Um, projects that can be now executed within our eSports lab will be able to apply to and can be used in DECA, can be used in Skills USA, can be used for even things like your um, SAE, your supervised agriculture experience. Um, so these types of um, investments in facilities are now going to have a uh, expansive reach through a lot of our, our career connected learning experiences too. So and Jim, so talk a little bit about why like why do you think uh, Palmer Hamilton wanted to connect? Obviously, we're in the vicinity, but talk a little bit about the relationship with the school district and what you're most excited about. Well, I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that we're literally a stone's throw away from the high school. I mean, um, I remember when I was in Wisconsin, we're like, we're going to go visit the school and check it out. And this is the first day we all kind of met each other <laughs> Did physically. You yeah, right. Um, yep. Well, I, I got in the car and I put it in my GPS and I'm like, this can't be right. Like, it's like, it's back there. I'm like, did I put in the wrong thing? They're like, no, it's literally around the corner. Like, yeah. We can cut through our backyard and, yeah. and, and walk there. I'm like, oh. so I think what's exciting about it is the fact that there, that you are so close, but I think it is an extension upon what you brought up, Chris. And it's that we already have relationship not just hey you're in our backyard it's no we have people that are interning with us we have people that are always coming to talk to us and the school already has that relationship um with palmer hamilton and we wanted to extend that and obviously it's good for both of us we're really showing in wisconsin what can a major esports dual use space look like because mike hit it right on the head a lot of these spaces and a lot of the k through 12s that i talked to are unaware that they don't need an arena and they are also unaware that they can't that they're like oh we can use cte and stem and esser funding in order to do this and like yeah because it's dual use really during the day it's computer science it's stem it's cte um and then at three o'clock or 255 whenever the bell rings it becomes an esports program so funding wise it's there but we re also really wanted to show from a palmer hamilton's perspective knowing that we ha we are just entering in to the esports space. Obviously, we have maker spaces, we have Fab Lab, we've done a bunch of spaces already. We can make them look nice, but this is the first esports one we've really jumped into. And that's why we kind of took it from what would be, if you look at spaces kind of going into a good, better, best, and like a baby stepping in from starting somewhere to end, um, we're hooking up Alcorn with pretty much the best. It well, is, uh, yeah. we want it to be a beacon not only of like, hey, look at us, which is also cool. I'm not saying that there's not a cool factor along with all the lighting and cool stuff like that. <laughs> but it is also the fact of schools, you can do this on some level. Yep. And I think when I'm talking to a lot of administrators, I'm talking to a lot of districts, um, there is a general group of those people who are outside of whether it's age based or they were never a gamer, they don't really get it type thing, which is fine. Uh, nobody should be as nerdy as me. It, that's my job is to do that. And that's why I'm here. But we try to help them also see the vision. They can't envision why it's there. Yeah. So it is duplicative in the fact of you can do this. We can help you with it. We're not full of crap. Like we're not trying to sell you a bunch of stuff that you don't need, but also here's what a dual use space really looks like. And, and then the next phase that we're going to, obviously going to be working on together is how do the kids like it? Yeah, right. How are they succeeding? What is going to happen? What is their feedback? Because we want that. If, uh, it goes back to my original statement. If kids are not succeeding, the program will not succeed. Well, let's, let's, let's we, look. You, you guys queued up really well. So in the next couple, we're, we're going to end here in a couple <clears> minutes, <throat> but I want to queue this up. And before I get into, I'm going to piggyback off something my friend Mike said, first of all, as you see this space, let, let's, I want to thank everybody involved from Palmer Hamilton to Jerry Isleth, Dan Keel. Let's also give a shout out to Randy Dricken, Jake Rasmussen and his, their crew from the IT side, Nick Deck and his crew for really being flexible and willing to come together. You know, these types of changes are messy, but in the end, we're all sharing the same mission and vision. 
I want to thank John and Preston Gardner because they're making a $25,000 donation to this space. Outside of some nominal painting and electrical upgrades, our school district is using already budgeted funds that are grant dollars for to match $5,000 as just a offer of goodwill. So this space is costing our district nominal funds for electric and and, and, uh, and low voltage upgrades, a little paint and 5,000 bucks. So thank you to Palmer Hamilton, Respawn and the Gardner family and Jeff, thank you. And on that note, let's cue it up. Here it is. Mm -hmm. Take a look at this. This is what our students will be able to see and play in every day after. It's an existing classroom. It has 28 chairs and desks, so it meets that requirement. You are looking to the north outside. This is Mr. Iserloth's uh, current computer lab and current uh, project lead the way space. Mike and, Mike and Jeff, just some quick highlights. You want me to keep sliding through so they can see the whole thing. Well, there's obviously going to be PCs on all these desks. Uh, <laughs> yep. we, the way we were designing it was basically for that. We wanted to make sure there were 28 there. We wanted to make sure students had enough elbow room. Um, and on the right, there's actually going, there's a couch, there's a soft seat couch. There's going to be TVs on the sides, which I'm sure we'll, we're going to show in yeah, a second. Let's keep going. Um, and this Here's is the front fr of the classroom. Yep. Yep. Front of the classroom where the teacher's desk is there. It's it's a custom um, front so that we can have that esports space. We have a cool kind of backlit logo. And again, uh, to uh, the teacher that's going to be in here, we want to make sure that we could take out that whiteboard and he could use technology to his advantage. So those are two 75 inch big TVs. They're going to be sitting in there, well, 75 to 65, depending on which one we grab, um, with other desks that are also on the sides to be able to get the 28. We also made it look really nice on the sides so you could flip to the next one. Um, that's where the consoles are going to be. That is your, if that was uh, north, was looking out into the hallway, this is going to be your east. So two 55 inch plus TVs that are sitting there that are going to have a console. It's all lit up. Um, a big part of this also was the what we're going to be laying over it. We wanted to give it that tech feel, that CS feel without being super gaming, but also draw attention from the outside. So that's all glass on the outside. So you can actually see in uh, very brandable. We stayed with a lot of the same branding colors that are in the Elkhorn uh, district, which is going to be great. Um, these are all custom desks as well with, with custom machines. Uh, and then this is uh, what we call kind of like a pop-out wall. Uh, pop-out not in the fact that we actually built something, but that the color pops. Uh, it's a matte black finish that is going to be painted by the Elkhorn team. And then uh, we're actually laying on a, uh, a kind of shiny version of the same black so that when the lighting is there, that yellow lighting that you have, that can be turned to whatever color you really want it'll actually glow. It'll look like it's actually popping off and those letters are just kind of um, exploding from the wall. And that's really what a lot of kids want. They want to make sure that, yes, it is usable from a teacher perspective and from a distant perspective, and it provides what you need from 8.30 a.m. or 7 a.m., depending on when your kids come in, until 3.00. But you also want that wow factor so that when parents are walking by or other district people are walking by, it's great. But it's also a draw for kids. We want the kids that may not understand that STEM and STEAM and CTE is not just robotics, that they can come in here and you're drawing them in through a hook. Because esports in general is not really a major. Marketing, uh, CS, law, Engage, you know, event strategies, social media, all the tech that you use for production. Those are the things that kids are going to learn. Esports and gaming is just kind of the hook to get them involved sure. in that. And this is exactly what that space is. You want the kids to come back and be like, have you seen this room? And that's what we really wanted to give to Elkhorn. We want people to come in here, not just kids, but staff and parents to be like, this is amazing. Been and versatile. Like and versatile, versatile, super versatile. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Mike, and you, we're looking to the out to the hallway, so you can see the graphics there. It's going to have a, you know recognition for Palmer Hamilton and and uh, respawn. Um, and just want to close here in the next minute, Mike. Any any highlights that you're most excited about that Mr. Eiser lost most excited about that you just want to talk about before we uh, end our noon whistle here? 
I mean, I'll just throw it out there too. Uh, even though like our games may finish at like four, four thirty, even when kids aren't playing, it's not their scheduled day to play. Um, they're still hanging out until five p.m. Um, mm-hmm. We literally have to kind of force kids to leave the building um, that are connected to this program. And I think um, even on like on a Friday night, we're like like it's time to go home. Like it's time to go home. Like that's, that's the connection that this makes with a lot of our students is that it's, it's their place. It, these are their people. These are, this is what they excel at. And um, I, I'm really excited to get uh, this completed. And so that way our students have a dedicated space basically that, uh, that they're really, really energetic about. So I know I'm ready to, I'll probably come in on some Saturdays and do some gaming myself once this is all up and running, but you know, well, we're gonna have there when I fly in. I'm, yeah. I'm actually going to just come hang out at, at Alcorn uh, <laughs> when I come in. Yeah. Well, again, John, any comments? I mean, this is the first time you've seen this. this is the first time our community is going to see this. Any thoughts? Yeah, I applaud all you guys and everybody. <clears throat> excuse me, everybody involved because it is versatile. It's your forward thinking, planning. You know, how can we get this done and and get it done through dollars that like you said, very affordable for the school, really hardly anything that, and you know, Mike, when you say that there's kids there and you have to ask them to leave, like, that's great because I know so many people in our district and it kind of runs through the district always ask on projects like this, is it good for the kids? And then the planning starts. So congrats to all you guys. Yeah. Yeah. And I just want to close with just uh, before we get off here is just like, you know, just, as you said, like this is a minor investment in kids from our district, but a major commitment from Palmer Hamilton, the Gardner family to our district. So thank you, uh, Mike Dolly. Thank you for all you do. And Jerry Iserloth for engaging the kids and creating these opportunities. Thanks to uh, the IT team, the building and grounds team, and everybody who's been involved, Dan Keel for providing his leadership. And Jeff, just thank you for being such an active participant and we've known each other for a couple months, but man, you really became a part of the one herd. So we appreciate you and we appreciate yeah. you jumping on and, um, and we got to get our people back to work. So yeah. on that note, I just want to say thank you, everybody, Jeff, thanks for staying on. Heck and yeah. on that note, thank you guys. We're all going to jump off here. Thanks everybody. Yeah. Thank appreciate it. Take, yep. Take care.